So today's topic is all about, I mean, we didn't write this on the note, but I feel like this is what's coming through for me and maybe you can add what's coming through for, for you. Magnetism through authenticity. Mm. Drawing in your dreams, your desires through the magnetic energy of being your true fucking self. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Salt Bay. <laughs> And that's really what we're going to dive into today because I have been feeling, and I feel like Bella can agree to this too, that we're in this chapter right now where, I mean, we've been in this ever since we first started the podcast, we were like fully embodying the role of like being a successful podcaster and just like going in on this journey with that confidence and that like oomph kind of energy and the results we saw from it were just so incredible and now we're strengthening that like muscle of embodiment even deeper as we go on this path and that's what we're going to dive into today. Did you have anything else that you feel like is the overall overarching topic that we're going to talk about we can give people a little intro on? Yeah. Anything that you wanted to talk about? Yeah, I would just add that I think part of this is us recognizing that in the quote unquote market, which is not exactly the right term, but just for now, people are craving authenticity. Like there is a reason why in the social media world, in entrepreneurship and business and friendships, relationships, people want the real shit. They don't want the old stuff of just like you just know we're becoming kind of we're like smartening up as consumers in a way and i think our ability to tell when someone or something is not exactly coming from an authentic place it's a lot more obvious and i think that's because we're all being called to higher levels of authenticity and i guess i would also just start by not necessarily giving it a definition but just broadening it to say that authenticity when we talk about it it's not just about like be yourself with your friends and your family and like be who you are. It's also about being authentic to your vision and what you want and your gifts and your actions and the things you do every day. Like it goes deeper to be (laughs) everything you're saying. I'm like, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Truly, it goes deeper. Like it's so much more than like the I'm imagining you on a TED talk. (laughs) Uh, stage right now (laughs) I would love to give a TED talk about this honestly but like keep going keep going but yeah I think there's kind of the the low-hanging fruit of authenticity which is very like cutesy it's social media based it's just express yourself and whatever but it's honestly low stakes the authenticity we're talking about is more risky and is more profound because it's being authentic, not just to the personality and the identity that you have of your persona, it's being authentic to your fucking soul and what you want and your Mm. actions and your desires and everything coming out of that. It's like paving your own freaking way and not like letting yourself be, you know, brainwashed into doing it this way because every expert says you have to do it that way. Like being authentic Mm. is also going really fucking deep and honoring all parts of you, like the messy shit, the fucked up shit, the low vibe stuff, like everything. And that I think is what humans respond to. And they're like, that's what I fucking want. Like I will actually listen to an angry song (laughs) because I know it's coming from your soul. Like that's the type of shit that I think is like the real authenticity and not like the be authentic and be yourself. And it's like, okay, fucking easy enough when you're just like doing it from the surface level. I feel like true authenticity is from a subconscious perspective it's like you have dissolved all the programming and conditioning that's making you feel all constricted in your body and you feel safe enough energetically and just physically to express your true self Mm -hmm. and the subconscious really comes into play here because if you have beliefs that you're not safe to do x y and z or you're not enough to express yourself in this way you're gonna feel constricted in your body and when you become aware that ooh, I'm believing right now that maybe my voice isn't worthy of being heard and then you feel that constriction in your body and you open up to that instead of closing off and believing it Mm -hmm. it's like you open yourself up to that feeling you start showing the universe and your nervous system that you can be a big enough being to hold that energy and then you get to experience the polarity of it the higher frequencies that are also that big yes so 
with authenticity, I feel like it goes hand in hand with magnetizing your desires because you enter into a vibration and a state of being where you can actually be a big enough being to hold those higher frequencies because you're no longer constricting yourself and closing yourself off. Yes. Yeah. I love that you brought that up because I actually wrote, I can maybe share this if it feels aligned, but um, I actually wrote out a static post. I haven't posted it yet, but it was all about, um, it was actually inspired by our conversation over text where I was trying to explain <clears throat> something that I learned about my human design. And at first it seemed like maybe that's a negative thing. And I had this whole epiphany about like being authentic to our quirks and like the things that we're kind of like the things that we are naturally maybe struggling with and that by accepting those it actually takes away the negative charge from them and Mm. it helped me realize this like deeper level of self-acceptance that's like even recognizing when you like don't have to like change or heal quote unquote this thing about you because it's actually a positive quirk that exists within you that isn't a good or bad thing it just is and that a lot of us have those things but we think like we it's, it would be bad to be like yeah I actually do like struggle with this thing you embrace it yeah you embrace and then it the gift comes through yes yeah or you just take the charge out of it and so then the thing just kind of operates naturally and without resistance how do you feel about the magnetism part of this like I feel like there's so many different angles you can talk about this from like someone who is attracting an audience or being an influencer or being seen or being famous. Like that is a whole different level of like what we're talking about that you can have a conversation towards, or you can just talk about it in terms of like magnetizing your most ideal friends or Mm -hmm. your most ideal career or your most ideal partner. There's a level of like, understanding your energy that you want to emit out that will allow a reflection to come through so what's your thoughts on like the magnetism aspect of this yeah well that's why I think when you have almost this radical self-acceptance energy coming from you then everybody else has energy readers is going to respond in a more like you become that magnet because you've removed the clunky energy from your aura. So the example, I think an example I know for me is like when I basically like there's a, uh, like a magnetic attraction, literally magnetic attraction that happens in humans and in like your aura from like your energy centers, if you will, that when you are being authentic to yourself and let's say to a specific part of you, it creates this attraction and pulls people in. So the reason why self-acceptance is so key is because I'll give the example of what has to do with my voice and my throat, because I think people will be surprised to know that I actually daily have a struggle of, especially in social circles, my mind is like, what do I say? How do I say this correctly? When do I chime in? Uh, Am I supposed to speak now? Uh, Am I going to do this? Like that's a chatter that happens in my mind and I realize it's because my throat in human design is completely undefined so there's like literally no set way that it functions it's fucking completely spontaneous and effectively has no idea what to do to other people I kind of love that it's it literally is like it has your throat is on fucking it's literally unhinged it is literally unhinged (laughs) like when you when you like when I was reading the explanation of this it was like a person with a completely open throat has no idea what to say, can't ever rely on their voice being the same and like just needs to accept that they actually don't know what to say. That doesn't mean that I don't logically, cr- logically correct. Because that's when my mind trying to come in and be like, no, you do know what to say. No, no, you can't plan this out. That's actually me ignoring the fact that no, I, I actually don't know. And I need to accept that it's completely spontaneous and that I just have to trust my gut to know what to say. So in social scenarios, instead of being like, like you more so channel, what would I channel? Like you're more, you're more so channeling receiving. Is that what it is? Well, yeah. Like it's, it's some of that, but it's also like, let's say in when we're podcasting or when I'm like talking to someone at dinner, like in my mind, they're speaking, I'm listening. Part of me is like, what are you going to say next? What, what's your response going to be? That's like my not self trying to be controlled with my voice. 
the actual highest self would be to let my gut, my like yes or no excitement response dictate what I'm going to say next. And also be okay with the fact that it might be like surprising and shocking and just like unknown. Mm. And the more that I embrace that, I find that in social scenarios, I'm so much more free to just listen and be there. And then if I say something and I'm like, wow, I wasn't planning on saying that. And I just accept that that's what's going to happen. That creates the energetic signature of magnetism because then energetically people are like attracted to that openness in my voice and in my throat, whether they realize it or not. And so instead of pretending that I do know what to say, I'm just letting it come out in the moment. And that's what I do when we podcast is I'm just trusting my gut and I'm in more of a channeling state. So my throat just goes and I talk and I just use my voice however it is in the moment. But I, I, I can't plan it out before and I can't like convince myself that I know what to say. Like I truthfully don't most of the time and it just has to come out in the moment. And that's what creates magnetism and why some, someone like you would be like, but you're so well-spoken. And I'm like, yeah, that's because I have accepted the fact that I never know what I'm going to say. And that is like the aura of feeling safe in your body. Yes. I'm just making the connection of like you've, you, people call it like an energetic odor Ooh. that we give off. Yeah. Where we all have like an energetic scent and you pick it up from other people, whether you realize it or not, because we are just all psionically like advanced that way. Mm -hmm. But when you pick up the odor of someone feeling safe in their body, you feel safe in your body and you feel good. And this is why people will say like, pay attention to who makes you feel safe mm. because that's like the people that are going to allow you to be on that journey of really fully fucking expressing yourself and being open with who you are. I actually had an experience with my um, hairstylist, the girl that I went to for the first time um, in this new area that I'm living in. I had never met her before, but she also had moved over here. She's from the East Coast too. And I find that people from the East Coast just have this aura about them about them where they don't give a fuck <laughs> like what people think about them. And you just immediately feel safe in their energy because they're just so themselves. There's no like, you know, you know exactly what I'm yeah. saying. And maybe it's New York, especially I'm from New York and we just fucking say it how it is. And when I went into this hair appointment I sat down and this girl was just so safe in her own body mm. and so present and just so herself that I felt an immediate like ah oh, which is so interesting yeah. because and it was just like this immediate connection maybe it was like an east coaster thing but like when you feel safe in someone's energy to just be yourself yeah that is like such a sign of like wow this person's like really wearing their like authentic pants today right yeah yeah I mean that's so beautiful because that's then why I think auth authenticity is something that we're so naturally drawn to because well exactly what you're saying it gives off that uh, um that sense of safety and that like permission that now you can be who you are because I'm okay being who I am and all of my messiness and imperfection and whatever and it's so beautiful and that's what people are picking up on energetically when other people are authentic, like to that deep level. Like that's when someone, you know, when they're being authentically really sad or having a hard time, like that's also magnetic to like witness mm -hmm. someone in like their sacred rage. Like that's beautiful. And that's another level of authenticity. That's not just like smile and be cute all the time, you know? Right, right. It's the full range. Yes. The full spectrum. Yeah. Of authenticity. Yes. Um, Maybe we can go into like a little bit of our own personal journeys with embodiment and really showing up as I'm seeing that as one and the same, like embodiment I'm viewing as like you are fully waking up and embodying your highest state of being, which is your authentic, true, real self, which can be relayed over into authenticity, but drop us into your journey a bit. Like how has that been for you? What are the things that help you do that? Where do you find that you bump up against resistance towards doing it? What's your journey been like? where to start <laughs> like uh <laughs> she's like all i can think about is carl signs <laughs> you just call him carl what's his name carlos carlos carlos, carlos signs carlos do you have you can you go first yeah sure uh i wrote down a few things so i have okay, some perfect. things that like are top of mind for me yeah. 
But um, at first, when you're on this journey of embodiment, it kind of feels like a little bit of a fake it till you make it energy. Yeah. And we've spoken about this before. And you feel like you're going a little bit delusional. You're like, okay, I'm going to show up as this confident person and do these things because your body hasn't yet adjusted to that energetic state of being. So it feels like you shouldn't be acting that way. But if you can embrace that discomfort, like I was saying before, that's when the magic really starts to happen and you start to adjust to this new level. And um, for me personally, it started out with like self-care practices and really taking care of my energy and doing the nervous system regulation work. Mm. So I like to do it the reverse um, engineer approach of figuring out what energy you want to tap into and what's the highest state of embodiment that you can access by tuning into a desire or a vision and then you use that vision to kind of show you who that person is in that chapter and that timeline and how they're showing up and how they're dressing and are they wearing makeup are they Mm. just going for the natural look how are they talking what's their confidence like and you spend time in that timeline and in that vision um strategically is sitting down in meditation doing it not just freaking thinking about this all the time because then you eventually live it but when you're in that moment of that meditation or that visualization feel into all those things and this is what i did with that freebie guide Mm. if you want to go have like a step-by-step process i just made an entire free guide i'll link it below which is pretty much what I'm saying, just written down in prompts, but you can reverse engineer it. And that's what I did with my own journey. I was like, okay, who is that, that you Mm. in that timeline and how can I draw into this now? And I saw her, I saw how she was acting. I saw how she was filming TikToks. I saw how she was speaking. I saw how she was working and I have been practicing showing up as that version of myself every freaking day. And it started out feeling a little clunky, like for sure. I would show up to do my routines and practices and there was resistance. I was using like the habit tracker and this was like more so I would say in like February and March, Mm -hmm. I was having to be more like in the discipline part of it. But then once you snap into that being like, wow, these routines and practices are a part of me and this is just who I am. All of a sudden you realize that that version of you has just become who you are. And I find that the nervous system regulation aspect is so freaking important. And you don't have to go crazy with this. Like do breath work twice or three times a week or even once a week and start showing your body that you can be with discomfort. Because when you're out there practicing being that state of being and embodying that authenticity and that realness of like who you truly are on a deep fucking level, you're going to run up to experiences that bring out so much fear and doubt like you're gonna be like okay i'm embodying this confident version of me that doesn't give a fuck what people think about me and i'm gonna get on this tiktok app and record a video that's just like me and i'm gonna share me Mm. and when you're doing that all of a sudden there's gonna be this energy that comes up inside of you and this doubt that's gonna say what are you doing what about your cousin from fucking uh, new york that's gonna judge the shit out (laughs) and all of a sudden this discomfort arises You got to train your nervous system to be okay with that and to open up like how I was saying. So you think doing breath work once a week or twice a week isn't going to do anything, but your body starts to attune itself to a process of like, okay, this is what we do when discomfort arises and you're doing the silent meditation practices and you're becoming aware of the thoughts and you're not attaching to them. And then all of a sudden that old self that's trying to come back in, the ego is trying to like put you back in that place of like constriction and and having all these weird conditioning patterns, conditioned patterns and, and like ways of being that aren't really your authentic self. All of a sudden, like that part of you just starts to dissolve because you start to change your relationship to it. Mm. So my journey has looked a lot like this. And this is why I'm getting so passionate about teaching this and bringing this into like more of my coaching sessions and like the program that I'm making, because this is such a beautiful process of like, I see it as like becoming your true authentic self because you're freaking shedding yeah. all those layers that are just like not you anymore. Yeah. And one more thing, they did serve you. That's the thing. Like, we can hold a lot of shame of like, why Why am I acting this way? Why did I act this way? It served you. Right. It protected you from whatever your mind thought it needed to protect you from. And now you're at a point, like view it as like you listening to this podcast right now 
every omi out there that's like wow this is freaking resonating with my soul it's because you're ready mm. like this information found you because you're freaking ready it's not like oh why haven't i done this yet you're here now because you're ready yeah what's the saying like when the student is ready the teacher yeah when the student's <laughs> ready the t- yeah or the master appears yeah when your soul is ready, your authenticity comes knocking at your door being like, bitch, let's go. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'm curious for you in this journey, were there any not- notable checkpoints in like, quote unquote, real life offline that also helped you with this journey of like, you noticed that you were interacting differently like when you saw friends or you like went out or whatever, like when you were like out and about. Yeah. I think what you were saying before about like thinking about what you're going to say or trying to like act a certain way is definitely something I relate to too. And I'm not sure if this is cause I also have an open throat and I mm-hmm. only have one channel that's like half connected to yeah. it. So maybe there's like a similarity there, yeah. but um, yeah, I just noticed like I'm way more like in my body and it feels really good. Um, but here's the thing. Like, there are still moments where that pops up. Yeah. Like, there are still moments where the old self comes in or that energy comes in. It is about what you do in those moments. Yeah. Like, how you relate to them. Totally. Like, you don't have to make it mean something about you. You're just a fucking human. Right. That's like yeah. Moving that voice is going like to be it's, there. It's Because it's always yeah. going to try to keep you safe. Yeah. And I think that's also almost to, like, clarify what this, like, goal would look like for someone who is working toward living more authentically in all the different ways it's like yeah it's not that like you'll then go to hang out with your friend group and that voice disappears forever it definitely I think can get quieter and change but it's that you listen less to it and act you don't really act on that one you're kind of just like you see it you're like it's okay we're all right and you choose a different action and that's what locks in the new state of being is choosing Mm. the different pathway than you normally would but for sure that voice is tends to stay there but I do think it starts to get quieter and I do think you can eventually make it somewhat go away when you are super consistent with like even taking a more active approach in rewiring and like replacing those thoughts let's say with something else which is more aligned with like yeah just not caring what people think or being confident or like trusting yourself or whatever that then in those social moments or whatever the real life scenario is that your mind then comes operates from a new system i feel like it's repetition of doing the thing where it would normally come up. yes because then it's a new normal right like for example i don't really feel resistance posting on tiktok right because i've been doing it for yes two years or a year i can't even remember but like when we first got on the mics i was yeah. nervous as hell totally <laughs> yeah right and i that's was like the what is this the more that you just did it and showed up like then the new you comes through yes yeah i was gonna say for my journey it's definitely been through just walking through the fucking fire so many times and surviving and being like oh we're fine it's okay that i've been able to cement in that sense of like I always have my own back and even if there is a slightly less than ideal outcome from me expressing my truth and authentic self and whatever that is that it's worth it because it feels so fucking good to be authentic so Mm. I feel like the beginning I feel like if I were to sort of section out the journey there was definitely a section of it, I think more, let's say the beginning where there was a, at least a noticeable start to it, which was probably in my first corporate job through the pandemic was very action going through the fire oriented. And it was just like, I really think I was being guided by something at that time too, because I think back to myself and I like even look back at pictures or videos from that time. And I'm like, there was a fucking either me right now being the higher self that that version was speaking to was like fully guiding me to just go through the fucking fire and choose like what felt right for me over what felt what was right for the crowd and doing that just like it just fucking burns everything down like you have no choice but to face your inner doubt voice and like face all of the potential consequences because you just 
throw yourself in it. And I'm really grateful that I did because I think it totally shaped my new default of like, of course I'm going to fucking be myself literally how or why would I do anything else? And then, Oh, you're referencing the whole COVID thing. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. In part, okay. in part, like the beginning, it was like my first few months at my corporate job, which only, I literally had like three months before it turned into COVID life. But that was like me being like out in the world at my first job and like, you know, just bringing me yes, to yeah, yeah. a real, you know, like bumping up against other human beings. Because <clears throat> the reason I asked that is ultimately, this is something I've really value from Saadi Simone's new book called Spiritually We, where he's talking about how like all of this healing work and inner stuff is literally only half of it. Like the whole point is to take it out into the real world and to with people and in community and Mm -hmm. like in the world with other human beings that are completely different from you. If you're able to take out your, take your inner work into the real life and be authentic with total fucking strangers and like in all sorts of different scenarios, like that is the litmus test of if you are really making strides in being who you are. Cause ultimately like, it's pretty easy to do it at home in the comfort of your kitchen, making to a video camera. to your camera. Like, I, I mean, mean, it we is shouldn't scary say that because I, I'm saying like, <laughs> yeah, obviously that takes a lot. Like I'm not diminishing that fucking at all. It's a great trial by fire, but do that in real time in front of other people too. Like that is also a whole other like echelon like on a stage or in front of like a group yeah, yeah that's like just the next like level in real it. time totally. with people where you're getting like literal real-time feedback that's not delayed mm-hmm. um but yeah so that's like the yeah like the pandemic period i've so i've told more in-depth stories about this too in other episodes i forget which one. Oh, the fear of being seen episode i think i told like the full story of in my job that i was like afraid that everybody didn't like me and then when I left and they did this whole benedictions thing, everyone was like, we va- we love how authentic and honest you are. And I was like, wow, was not expecting that. And it was like a true, um, just proof of like, it actually pays off. And even if people disagree with it, they will pick up on the authenticity and that's what humans want. Um, and then the like part two to the fate to the journey has been a lot more like inward and energetic and like subconscious and, going inward and really looking at the like beliefs and where I'm coming from and doing all sorts of like either reprogramming work or just being more sort of um, contemplative and inward and alone time to really be with myself. And I feel like that has now brought it to the new level where now I'm like playing with even more levels of expression. And because I did deep healing work through the hypnosis journey and through other things that we both know and love and practice that that has unlocked another level of it. That is like, wow. Okay. Like now you really get to play with this and really be authentic to not just your expression, but to how you do things and how you operate and like what your gifts are and how you want to create your own success and your relationship. And like, yeah, I mean, it just goes, there's so many layers to it too. Cause I feel like that's where we even will make sacrifices towards the norm in things like how our relationship relationship dynamics are like everyone's relationship is going to be really different. Like the way that Milan and I interact is going to be super different from how my sister and her boyfriend interact. And it's not that like, Oh, we're a bad couple. We're not like properly loving each other because this person does it this way. Like that's like a whole nother layer. I think to explore too, is all the like interactions and ways that you do things and to bring so much more permission to like letting them, iterate in a way that's right for you and that's the beautiful part of going deeper into individuation and something that we're noticing in each other is like wow Nikki is so good at this and like that's her fucking bread and butter that's how she's like thrives doing it this way and then I'm like I do it completely opposite or I do it this way and that's what works for me and Mm -hmm. seeing those as both divine and on path really lets you to then continue to do that. And then the more that you love and accept that in yourself, you learn to love it and accept it in other people. I have a question. I remember you mentioning that there was like, I think it was two episodes ago when you were talking about your hypnosis journey about like needing to control situations and how that is like 
rooted in a belief that you released and now there's like more freedom of being in social situations and Mm. not needing to control outcomes yeah do you feel like there's also this aspect of authenticity where you release the care of I feel like this connects like how people are perceiving you like controlling how people are perceiving you and like what's your journey been with that yeah oh my god I'm really glad you brought that up actually because yes totally I think part of the control thing was yeah I don't think I realized it but I think a lot of this a lot of people can relate to this that we don't even realize it but we're trying to make sure that we're seen in a certain way and almost it's like oh I want them to I want them to know like the real me and the authentic me and in a weird way that's actually like inadvertently inauthentic because you can't control how people are going to perceive you and learning to let that go has been massive, especially in the context of my relationship, because I realized, I mean, I think this is true for everybody. Like nobody is really ever going to see and witness the partnership and the love that you have with your partner, the way that you do. And in social Mm -hmm. scenarios, it's so common that like, I feel like sometimes as couples, you actually act for some reason differently in front of other people than you do at home alone. And it's not that you're being... 100%. Yeah, and it's, it's not that you're being inauthentic or putting on a show or anything at all, or even the opposite. Like you're... I think it's just that A, social scenarios, like there's just different energy at play. And I know in my specific scenario, because we hang out so much with work people, Milan's not going to be like very yeah. PDA like it's I've joked that I think probably some of his coworkers like think that our relationship is like not great or something and that I were not like in love <laughs> because he's in a fucking work scenario and it's not it's not gonna be lovey-dovey which I like completely fucking respect that and I would be the same if I was hanging out all the time like in a more corporate job environment with my partner like they're just not gonna see that full range of who we are And I recently had to just really let go of trying to control that. And I was like, you know what? Nobody is ever going to fully know like what I have with my partner. And it's actually meant to be that way because that's why you're in partnership with this person. It's like you are meant to know the truth of your love for each other and the way that you are and who you truly are to each other and together as a unit. And nobody else is ever going to be able to see it fully. And that's fine. But it Like, I think sometimes also couples act weird because they're trying to control how other people perceive them. And so they get all fucking strange and like either they like are excessively lovey-dovey or like not at all. And there's just like some, everything is just like a little off kilter because we're thinking about how other people are perceiving us. And then we get frustrated. We're like, well, I want them to know that we're really like this. And I I want them to know that like, whatever. And it's like, nobody's going to ever fucking see that. Like, who (laughs) cares? Like, as long as you feel good and authentic in your relationship or in yourself, like, that's all that matters. And also the people who like really can read energy, like, they'll know. (laughs) Yeah. Also, there's like, okay, this is like the craziest thing. No one will ever ever perceive you or your relationship like how you're saying the way that you do and that is such a liberating thing to like fully understand that every single person perceives you through their own individual lens of subconscious beliefs right and people who see negativity and judgment it's because they have those beliefs within themselves that are literally the lens to which they are viewing another person or another relationship. And it says way more about them than it does the actual thing they're looking at. Mm -hmm. Like reality is quite literally a reflection of you. So the way you feel and relate to it says everything about you as the observer than it more than it does the thing. Totally. I remember Sarah made a post the other day about this. Like people who judge are giving away all their secrets like if you really listen to the way people judge and talk about other people which we're all freaking guilty of you will get an inside scoop into what is going on within their mind right which just gives you more compassion for them too of just like yes judge their judgment because that's a we all have our shit yes we all have our shit totally but this is just going back to my like 
original idea of like you cannot control the way people perceive you yeah you cannot control the way that you are received and I think you have been such a big mirror for me on this journey because as someone who is wanting to fine tune the message and make sure that it's received and really lean into like this journey of like articulating something in a way where someone is actually understanding what I'm saying and like that need to like help people that fucking five in my human design like sometimes I can get in my own way of like caring too much about how it's perceived or received and then I'm dictating my own energy or my own peace within myself right. on how clearly a message was received or how I was perceived or how people are seeing me. So that's been a really big journey of just like letting go of that and allowing people to sometimes see you as the villain in their story. Like it's okay. Yeah. You're going to be the villain in some people's stories. You're going to be the trigger in some people's stories. Right. You're going to be the inspiration. You're going to be the expander. You're going to be the partner. You're going to be the friend. Right. You're going to play all the roles and that's how it works. If you think about the way that you assign meaning to certain people in your life, you are the only person that thinks of that person in that specific way. Right. You may be thinking that, oh, uh, Bob, he's the guy that acts like this and does this. Bob actually acts like that in front of you mm. and only in front of you because of the energy you put out. So it's just like this one big mind Yeah. <laughs> so much nuance I know. so like why think about it or care about totally. it like there's always so much nuance in every yeah level of this yeah the other i saw a video i think just yesterday that brought a, a whole nother layer to this too which is very similar to what you're saying but that actually by assuming that someone is going to judge you you are judging them and labeling assuming that they think negatively about you which is not very nice to do like yes sometimes people do have judgments of course but if you want to take it a step further you should it would be I think almost more it would be kinder in a way to assume that people want to receive your authentic self and that they think highly of you because if you work on your own sense of judging other people and you start to release that and you work hard to see people in their light then you can start to assume that other people are doing that too or to at least just leave it neutral but it's like this video is pointing out like by assuming that someone is judging you you are judging them as a judgmental person and casting mm. like painting their role before you even know like you have no fucking clue what they're even thinking and you're assuming that it's negative which is like don't assume that it's negative maybe it's neutral and then that's fine or maybe it's completely positive and then you painted them as a judgmental person right it's just a lot of energy and thought that is a waste of your life force <laughs> yeah truly yeah which is why in the end it's better to just not fucking think about it and just say what you want <laughs> that's the ego and you can observe it and be with it and have compassion for it but then at the end of the day like connect to your soul and your soul knows the deepest of deepest truths which is that you are me and I am mm. you and we are all one. So judgment is actually an illusion because when you're judging someone, you're judging your fucking self. Yes. <laughs> so, Amen. <laughs> um, I also wanted to share like a little experience I had this week, which is about like really embodying this state of confidence and mm. like knowing yourself and being in that authentic energy and I had an experience where I was kind of like kicked a little down and I was triggered by something. I was on threads and I don't know if your feed is the way that mine Wham. is, but it is the wild west of people just projecting all of their anger and like, which I mean, how are we going to say this when we just talked about like authenticity and allowing people to be, <laughs> but like sometimes I go on that app and I'm like, I need to go shower. It's a lot. Like <laughs> it's turning into like complainville. Do you see a lot yes. of, I don't know if it's just me. I've been seeing so much content of people like talking a lot of shit about like coaches and like the coaches, coach, which again, some of it is valid. Some of it is like, yeah, there's fucking people out there who are going to have bad intentions and who are manipulating people. Like, fine. I agree. Like that's happening. But it's to a point where it's starting to affect me because I'm like, I'm not like, again, the word coach is so inflated these days. It's like hard to purely identify as one, but obviously we both function as mentors and coaches and teachers and guides and all the things. So it's hard for it to not get to you. And I don't know. I'll let you continue what we're saying, but my feed has been similar and I've been having to say not interested to stuff. So it stops showing me 
all this crap that's so negative and projecting onto like service providers. Cause you're right. A lot of it is just people projecting and it's not like helpful criticism. It's just people shit talking perfectly normal things that happen in any industry, but the coaching industry is so heavily, um, scrutinized that it turns very negative. So anyways, what were you going to say? I just don't really live in that world of like seeing all that negativity yeah. about the coaching industry. And then I went on threads and I'm like, Oh God, like, I know it feels icky. So icky. I actually did a thread and then I deleted it. Cause I'm like, I don't want to contribute to this, but I made a thread that was like, why is, <laughs> I forget what I wrote. I wrote like, I don't understand why threads has become a place of just like projection I feel like I need a shower after I go on this app or something. No, <laughs> it really is. Like some girl posted the nastiest thread about like, she's literally a coach and she made a nasty remark about coaches and their teaching techniques. And it triggered the fuck out of me. And for in that moment, I just like didn't even recognize how much it triggered me. And then throughout my day, I like started to like lose my spark. Like I wasn't feeling motivated. I was like not really doing. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't even. And then I was like, you know what? I'm feeling a little funky. Like I literally feel a little off and there's like a a weird energy floating in me right now. So I went, I made lunch. I put on my bikini. I was laying outside. I was like, I like even said to Peter, I'm like, I feel like fucking grumpy and off right now. And I'm just going to like literally be with it and accept it and hang out with myself yeah. and just like be in this blah energy. And I like put on my bikini. I laid out in the sun and I, I left my phone inside and I just brought my notebook and wait, I think I even journaled about it <laughs> after I, I literally laid out and I was just like feeling all the fucking triggering energy (laughs) the top of it triggered (laughs) i wrote noticing it but how can i remain at my level of awareness and be with it uh this is like so freaking like all messy and like not even making sense i create my own reality with my deepest beliefs then i created this trigger too every single person is a reflection of myself judging another Mm. is pointless you simply Judging another, you are judging you. You can be with this energy without making it mean something about you. Acceptance, breath, and care for yourself. What others speak out loud is more of a reflection of what is going on within their own mind. How you respond to what someone says about you has more to do with with what's going Mm. on in your mind. Mm. Those at war in their own mind will start wars with others. Send them love and peace. (laughs) Dude. That's a good reaction. I sat there (laughs) and I'm sharing all this because if I was not like aware, I would have just taken that energy on as my own. Yeah. And it's not mine to keep. Like I was fully aware that I literally picked up this girl's vibration from reading the anger and like the judgment in her thread. And I was like, feeling so off and then I just went and I laid out in the sun and I did this whole energy clearing literally I just did it by myself I wasn't even listening to anything I laid in the sun and I was in my bikini just like feeling the sun all over my body Mm -hmm. and I imagined like the sun like bathing me of this energy but then I also used the trigger as a moment to be like "Ooh, like where is this striking a chord within me like is there a belief that's being tapped on with this girl's words right and why am I feeling this charge towards this? Mm. And I used it as like such a moment of um, healing. Wow. Because then I went into like this little transmutation of like, okay, like, is this actually true? No. Can I own being a coach and like allow others to also hold their opinions of this? Yes. And it like allowed me to unlock a new level of embodiment as being a coach and being a mentor because there are always going to be naysayers. There are always going to be haters. There's always going to be the polarity, the flip side of the coin. And in that moment, I was like, can I be a big enough being to be with this judgment and to not take it on as my own? And it was like such a beautiful little healing moment for me. And that's how I was using the eclipse energy. Like think things would come up and I'm like, whoa, this is cool. Let's dive into this. Like, what is this showing me about myself? Oh and my God. your triggers are your best freaking friends. Dude. So I wanted to share Nikki, that experience. <laughs> I am sitting here in the best flabbergasted energy because of 
how what you just outlined is so fucking profound because what I was thinking this whole time is I was like, it is so fucking perfect that you're talking about this because literally in the journey of being authentic and embodying and doing shit that you want to do, you are a fucking powerful ass coach and you happen to be in an industry that has people who any fucking industry has people who are doing things from a lower level of consciousness, fucking whatever. Okay. Just to put it simply, everything. Okay. It's just, there's always going to be duality. It's fine. The fact that you noticed you were triggered and you didn't just like, and then just like move on with your life and not take a second to address it. But you actually went deeper into it, wrote this whole thing out, sent the people love, gave them the respect that they're allowed to have that opinion. That's fucking massive. And then yeah. use it as spark to be like, I am proud of what I do and I can do it in my way. And these people can have their opinion and it doesn't impact what I'm doing. That is the fucking, that is authenticity. Yes. That is owning your shit because you're not like in denial of other people's opposing opinions. You're letting them happen, but you're not making them take away from what you do. And that is right. fucking powerful. Like, I just know someone... She could have been accurate, too. Like, yeah, she could have she been could be totally right. That. Maybe she is right. Yeah. Maybe they're, like, yeah. for sure. But it's like, it doesn't have to then penetrate you and then make you right. quit or do things, whatever, you know? And that's where so many people get tripped up is they're on this journey of authenticity and they see something that does trigger them because they're human and it's normal, but then they're like, fuck, you know, that they don't, yeah, you just kind of, you actually let it affect what you do. And that is taking away from who you really are and what your genuine goals are. And it's so beautiful to not just like completely shut out those triggers, but to actually let them be like fire for healing and moving forward. Because that's the beauty of seeing an opinion or a perspective on how to do something, not resonating with it at all, not, but then not judging the person for having that opinion. Like, sure. Maybe they're like a little upset and they're projecting, but maybe they're actually totally chilling and they're just like giving a valid perspective. And then, yeah, you just get to actually continue being who you are without then making that mean that everybody has to accept who you are. Cause that's the other layer of it is mm. you don't, you're not being authentic just so that you get the brownie points. That's actually inauthentic, I guess. Like you would want right. to just, that's the control. Again. Yeah. You want to just be who you are because that in of itself is a reward. This is what I mean by transmuting energy. Like, wow, it's su- okay. It's such a paradox. I was voice noting one of my clients about this when you are feeling an energy like in that moment i was triggered the first step in this process is to accept but the paradox of this is which like we can be big enough beings to be with this paradox you are in the process of transmuting an emotion but the first step of it is to accept it Mm. so a lot of times what happens is the moment we start feeling something we're already on step two of like doing the thing in order to get it out Mm. Oh, I just need to like journal and get it out. I just need to like do this practice and get it out. But you're skipping over the first step, which is like acceptance. Yeah. And I gave this analogy to my client in the voice note and she really liked it. So I'm going to share it here. But you can imagine acceptance as like, I think I may have even said this on the podcast before. Imagine you're a robot that's being tested for like the energy that it can feel and the emotions that it can feel. And it's tapped into like a, a test, like a scanner system. And you're the robot. And in that moment, you're being tested for like, okay, let us know. Are you feeling the anxiety here? Are you feeling the emotion? And you're just like sitting there and you're like, oh, yeah, I feel like the anxiety is in my chest. It's like this tense energy. And the tester's like, okay, great. That's that tracks. That's exactly what anxiety is. That's what anger is. And you're just sitting there like being with it. Mm. And that really helps me like just be in this mode of like acceptance and like being with the energy because that really is the first process, first step of the process. Um, and then once you're like at a different level of awareness of being like, okay, like I see you anxiety, let's fucking dive into this. Let's open our love and our compassion up to this and see what you got for me. And um, 
I've like really mastered this, this process. And I feel like everyone can do it in their own way of what feels right for them because sometimes people need movement. Mm. Sometimes people need silence and meditation. Sometimes people need to just like go fucking do something else and not even think about it and then come back to it. Like everyone has their own practice, which is the art of transmuting emotions. And I have found a way that works for me, which is what I just described to you of how I handled that trigger. And diving into the subconscious healing work and 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 doing all of this on myself and also doing this with clients has helped me so much understand that it's helped me understand that every single time you're feeling an emotion there is a root to it mm. like there actually I shouldn't say that because sometimes you just pick up emotions from other people and you're just like feeling feels but when you're feeling triggered mm. or when there's like a dense yes. anxiety or a fear it's because there's a perception you're, you're seeing yes. something in your reality that's causing that to, to come up. And it's not like everything, like how you're saying has to be healed and you have to do all the work and all the things. But if there's a repetitive yeah. emotion coming up or a repetitive experience, like, don't you want to get to the bottom of that? Like, don't you yeah. want to release at least that like look at it? That? Yeah. At least look at yeah. it. Cause then you can figure out like, Oh, this is deeper something that is worth healing. Or you're like, Oh, this is just like a core that is just me right. and I need to just accept it. And the acceptance is the healing. And the most powerful part is that that little process that I went through of going outside, putting on my, on my bikini, like the acceptance part was me just being like, I'm just walking away from my work right now. I can't even focus on this. I want to put my phone inside and just like be by myself. I didn't even have the intention of doing any sort of like transmutation. I brought my journal. I left my phone inside, but I was just like, I'm just going to fucking be with this and then I'll see where it goes. But where was I going with that? I was going to say something. Oh, th I, I wanted to say that that only took me like, I think like 25 minutes right. I was outside. And then I came back in and I literally said to Peter, I was like, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good now. Thanks, honey. <laughs> he just like sees me in these ebbs and flows. And dude. It's just so funny because men are so like, I know. and we're like, I know meh, meh, meh. it's amazing, dude. There's just like, let, there's like, go He's and just do like, your thing. <laughs> it's all good. Like, yeah but feeling my peels today uh, <laughs> yeah that process took me like fucking 25 minutes and then i came back inside took my bathing suit off went back into work mode <laughs> dude that's incredible oh my i really liked yeah. listening to you explain that because i was just like yes this is i was like i can imagine you doing it and just you're all of your guys at that moment were like yeah girl that's how yes. you get it done <laughs> Wait, can we talk about that for a second too? I know we're about to hit the hour mark, but like, it's so funny you brought that up because when I was outside, I've been connecting with this, this alien that's been helping me on my the blue, journey. Little blue I feel like I, the little blue guy and he's always with me. Like he's always there. And I feel like he's very in alignment with my mission too. And if you're listening to this and you're like, she's a fucking nut, I don't care if you think I'm a fucking nut. This is my authentic self. And I channel this alien being that's a blue little guy. And I don't even care if it's in my imagination or real. He really fucking helps me. And he comes in with the most wise and subtle advice that really hits. And it's in those moments where I'm reminded that this like trigger is there as a part of my mission. And in that moment, I connected with him when I was laying and just closing my eyes and laying in the sun. And he was like, this is a part of your process of like embodying yourself as a coach and your career path and owning who the fuck you are. Wow. And I was like, yes, bitch. Thank you. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Do you have little guides? Yeah. I mean, I definitely have they're not I don't always like um identify them if that makes sense like I don't always have a specific person or entity that is coming through but I definitely have like a consistent quote-unquote voice or like yeah I guess it's like a voice in your head <laughs> type of thing do you feel like it's your highest self like your soul self the one playing the video game yeah I do feel like I'm honestly in connection with her mostly because Yeah, just from when I look, I think that that's what's happening because when I look back at like, like I was saying, old videos or pictures of me, I'm always like, how did Bella at that stage fucking do that? Like someone, something was speaking through her and I can only think that it was just 
me like in the quote unquote like what future. like what moments like when I was first learning how to shuffle and I had no idea what I was doing I was so I was not good at it because there's a fucking learning curve and I would go out in my apartment complex at there was like a it was like a LA apartment complex with like five or six floors and there was a pool with like a bunch of decking around it that was like in the middle of the complex so there's like dozens of apartments like it's like basically being in a fucking coliseum like it's everybody can see you and i would go super determined and i would just shuffle my ass off with headphones on so people can't even hear the music all they hear is like my fucking awkward like thumping <laughs> sounds and i would just fucking drill and practice for hours and i look back and i'm like where was this courage coming from like it's like almost almost today i'm like would be more nervous to like go shuffle in such a public place than I was back then. And I'm like, something was driving me because I was so determined to dance and express. And like, I think also at that time, shuffling was like really like, like healing me because I, it was a form of physical movement. It was dance. It was new. Like I was just so drawn to it. And I would like share the videos of me on social too. Like at the beginning of my journey, when like Truly, like I wasn't, you know, quote unquote good, but I was, I just knew that I needed to do it. And so there was instances like that, that I look back and I'm like, I was fucking guided for sure. And then other times when I was just like making like videos or podcasting and like talking about like edgy things and like really expressing myself that again, I think I was, there was something pushing me to do it because I, I'm like in awe. I'm like, how are you like, <laughs> like, how are you doing that? Like, it's so crazy. I don't know. I, I, it's hard to describe, but I just have that feeling of like, I think I, my highest self, either me now or whoever I was connecting to was like moving through her and like helped her to do those things. I feel like a part of your life path is to help people heal through creativity. Yeah, I think so too, for sure. Cause like, it's such an important part of your your journey and like healing doesn't have to be this like dark thing it can actually be super uplifting yeah. and within the creative journey totally I mean <clears throat> I de yeah I mean actually another like example just came into my mind one time I went to Home Depot here and fucking vlogged in Home Depot like holding my camera up picking out plans for my place and I remember being nervous to do it in public but I just went and did it anyway. And it was so healing because I was like literally fucking vlogging, like probably one of the only people to be witnessed vlogging in this town. <laughs> and I was just doing it. I remember people were so cute and nice because everyone here is such an angel. And I, again, think I was like fully guided by either my highest self or my guides or whatever. And I remember though, at that time having the like voice in my body in my head that was like go do this like go and do this so I've always followed that voice so it's kind of just interesting to think about like who or what is that voice what do you think happens in life when you follow that voice I mean dude that's how I think you become <laughs> who you are like that's so many people you end up on a mic with <laughs> I mean dude so many people ignore that fucking voice they just ignore it and they never listen to it and it's like dude it's literally giving you the fucking exact clues of what you're meant to do like it is I know fucking telling you it's like what am I meant to do in life I'm like just listen get quiet and listen. literally just do what the fucking instinctive intuitive voice is telling you like if you follow that that's how you end up on the path that feels best even if it's most unknown which is another thing I've really come to terms with lately is like when your path is incredibly unclear that's when you know it's the right one with a few other I have caveats, an idea for yeah. the omis that is being inspired through this conversation and listening to you talking about the vlogging and going into Home Depot and vlogging in public on our call on Sunday, you know how we're like working on our creative projects yeah. together. I feel like we should all do something that like scares the shit out of us I'm down. <laughs> and like all hold each other accountable and we'll like put it in the chat too and like send updates and stuff. But that would be a fun thing to do with Everyone. yes i love that those types of exercises are so great because they just yeah just get you out of your comfort zone and like that's the walking through the fire i think part of authenticity that is so healthy because it just expands what you are capable of and like what your nervous system is capable of handling and it gives you the data 
and the triggers to know what is within. That's why I think yes. it works so effectively. Yeah. And if you guys haven't heard about our Omis community, we have a community called the Omis Oasis, which is a very low ticket offer. It's only $25 a month. And we have workshops every single month where we bring on experts in the coaching space, healers, entrepreneurs. We have Sarah Zula coming on in April, which if you don't know Sarah, she is my mentor. She was my coach for two years and she is a fucking gem of a human and she is just so skilled at what she does in the healing space so good. and she's going to come on and do hot seat coaching with the omis which is going to be freaking incredible yeah. go check out her instagram if you don't follow her already it's at sarah zulo sarah with an h and in the oasis we also have a group chat on slack with all different channels and then we have like these other one-off calls where we'll meet like on sunday we're having a, a call where we're working on our creative uh ventures and like throwing them in the in the zoom and talking about them and putting all this positive energy it's gonna be so fun great um so definitely go check that out we'll leave the link below and yeah that's all i had to say about the oasis now with this topic did you have anything else that you wanted to dive into uh no i think we covered it all that was great (laughs) that was great i felt fired up throughout that whole thing Love it. Okay, I'll close this out here. This is your sign, guys. Go be your fucking self. (laughs) And if you feel resistance, then lean into the healing. Yeah. Do some journaling, some subconscious healing. Hit us up if you want a guide or a mentor to guide you through the journey. This is just like the path of embodiment. Know that it's an ever-evolving process and it's not like this overnight thing. I am not saying that I'm like at the fucking peak of my journey whatsoever. I am still on this process of like leaning in and, and shedding those layers. And I think it just never really ends. Yeah, I agree. You just get deeper and deeper and deeper. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. Did you, and uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Leave us a comment. Engage with the Spotify prompt if you're listening on Spotify. And leave a comment if you're on YouTube. All right, guys. We will see you next Wednesday. We love you. Bye.